Ladies and German Soviets and Soviets, how you all doing? This is Khan Ulrich. And I'm Rang Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, let's see. We're coming back with that triple side of that triple pack for this week. And we're bringing you a nice little 2v2 on Orshan North, the one and only map. And Rang in this terrible twosome on both sides. Who do we have duking it out? Well, on the left-hand side in blue, we have Hungaricus playing as the Hungarian Cavalry Division, rather <clears> fitting. <throat> and he has Maverick Income. And Rutsky as 14th Infantry, also with Maverick Income. On the right hand side in red, we have Baldang, Balding, Ball B A 1 1, however you want to say it. He has uh, doo -doo -doo, Vanguard 20. Income mm -hmm. and 184 Strolocky Infantry Division. And Big Rob as 26 God Strolocky Balanced Income. You know, and, and look at this already. I'm actually kind of interesting to see how the cavalry divisions shape up over on this Axis side. Mm -hmm. Germans historically did not really play very well with their allies. Um, I'm hoping that's not going to be the case for <laughs> our duo over here. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, we've got these early planes. airplanes. Oh, I love seeing those uh, CR 42s. Why is that? Uh, just, just look at them. They're bloody biplane fighters. Yes, and I think I was just trying to <laughs> curious, just trying to figure out. Is there anything in particular you enjoyed uh, about them? But, oh my gosh, and you know what? The detail. We haven't said this in a while. My god, look at the detail on that thing. I know, it's really quite beautiful. Yeah. Like, the whole game looks great. It looks absolutely fantastic. It recites every cast, but it's a goddamn truth. You know, the nice thing about this, though, is that this time we actually get to see flags. In the last couple of uh, no. replays, we have not been able to see that too much. Also, can we say that the Faust Niki is probably the best name? Faust Sneaky is a pretty good name. It's pretty. Oh, it's man. a pretty sneaky, beaky, Faust-y. Whoa, reaky. wait. The biplanes oh. took out a, a Zis. Ah. It sorry, sorry. Oh, the Maxim, the, the uh, Maxims. Plane. I, I like what he's doing. He's got the recon, JU-88, and then he's trying to do the strafing of the CRs. But it's an LA-5, and it's kind of like a proper monoplane fighter. Which is weird. Mate. It's actually that the Soviets are such garbage. I know. <laughs> Let's, I know. Let's call it what it is. Um, yeah. Down south, we are kicking it off already. It's 14-10 over here in favor of the Soviets. And uh, Wilksy, actually a lot of Wilksy's materials right down here to the south. There was a couple of Baglit Pantagrand ideas to the north. Mm -hmm. um, but Airsat's opening, looks like? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got. I really like Borden with his Ultimate Cheekies. And even got, I love seeing the uh, support mortars mm -hmm. being used. But yeah, he's going to sneak up right into the barn. The Panzer II Lukes is going to be a pain in the ass, but if you can get that AT grenade shot off, that'd be lovely. True. Um, we're bouncing right now, so actually, you know what? The, the, P the P2 is doing exactly what it should. Mm hmm. It's in a perfect spot. Yeah, take out those half tracks. You remove the half tracks, and a lot of the early, you know, Baldang's troops are going to be kind of defanged. Yeah. Do you notice he's, uh, he's Stuart going through a lovely forest stroll just a little bit up north? Oh, up north. I was looking at the M5Ls. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, I mean. The, that's the what I mean. Okay. Yeah, just... okay, you're saying north. I was like, how north I know. <laughs> just, just, just a wee bit north. Not too north. Not the true north. Just... Not, not Siberia. Kim no, Chaka. not Siberia. <laughs> but uh, I like seeing this little Stuart play being brought in, but he's not going to be aggressing him too much. He's going to root for his uh, Streliki and other infantry units to take point. Well, and that's something we've talked about, too, which is kind of weird. I mean, Wuxi, with that 14th infantry... Yes, he's got Panzer Shreks. Yes, he's got some awesome, awesome AT guns, but uh, does not have a ton of infantry AT, not especially with what he's just selected here. Yeah, he's got like some of the PTRDs and Australikis and mm -hmm. the Cheekies have, what's it called? But yeah, it's nothing, nothing too crazy, honestly. Pretty standard Soviet stuff. But goddamn, it's just Stuart Blob is. That is scary. <laughs> Actually, no, what I, what I did mean to say, though, is that the 14th yeah. Infantry with Vuxi did not have the AT to... to oh, yeah, back. for sure. Oh, yeah, and definitely for the German side, you are correct. Our Panzer II Luke's in the forest. He's not having a good time. He's a, currently a pillbox, and he's currently blown up. Well, when you're a pill, you, you pretty much want to sit down and just be left by yourself, and, the, mm -hmm. you know, so it's happy to give that to him. Do you want to check yeah. up to the north? The Germans are making their own aggression, and look at all of those freaking Hungarian tanks. Oh boy, that's, that's, that's how you do it, Khan. And, and a lone KD-1 moving in with it at 45 mil? Uh, gee, I wonder who wins. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good that's a good question. I wonder who will win that engagement. Probably the, the big fat heavy tank. Probably. Probably. Because yeah. even, uh, yeah, even a sidearm with that KV is pretty good enough to 
pouch off those Hungarian tanks. But it is 15-9. Although the mm -hmm. Soviets are making a very, very nice dent in the German lines, they're yeah. not doing it where it counts. Yeah, it's really in the middle, it seems, as Rutsky has managed to have quite a few easy flags in the middle, which always happens on Orson Orf. Everyone always forgets about the middle and pushes rather hard along the flanks. But this is Puss and Bordang may actually work out and pay off once she starts capping some points. Well, the funny thing is right now we have these 120mm mortars desperately trying to drop fire to keep the Soviets at bay. Mm -hmm. But you can just see, they're just pounding forwards. That, that pack 40 is not going to be enough to save by itself. No, no, but this is the one problem with Bordang's Puss is everything is a little bit too uh, clustered. So they're going to take some, some hits from the 120mm, but nothing... Nothing too crazy. Just enough to slow him down. Well, it looks like everything short of those vehicles is completely pinned. Mm-hmm. Yes, the Snipiris are going to do some good damage here. And actually, we are going to see the Lux is going to get engaged by some of the stewards to, from to the south. Yeah. Uh, but just Airsoft Trooper moving on in. They have to desperately get some more ground fire on this. They do, they do. But uh, Bordering has meant to completely capture the whole southern hill. So that's going to bring the flags a little bit more towards... Soviet fav flavor, uh, favor, hey, not flavor. Too. Yeah, it's, it wouldn't, you know, nothing, nothing tastes better than a communist breakfast, which is probably just a loaf of bread. Oh, well, and the first roast, so you know. <laughs> um, but good lord, look at that, just that column moving in from the east. All Strzelski's in the front, all DP, excuse me, all the Machiki in the back. So mm -hmm. this is gonna be a delicious amount of firepower, and the Germans. Look where that's actually gonna be posted. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, that, oh, is, God. That, that is so far behind enemy <laughs> lines. That's almost on the Western Front. He's he's really optimistic. Geez, Louise. Yeah, he wants to be second hands with the, with the Americans before tea time. But the uh, the unfortunate thing for him is that at this point, he's lost pretty much all of his, his attack craft. Yeah. And, yeah, with the Junkers that they can strafe, that's going to be awfully hard to get rid of. Mm -hmm. There, he does have a uh, anti-tank IR-2 coming and things and trying to knock out Stug. That's that by play now. He's gonna do his best. Fuel tank leaking. Yeah, that's not that's not good at all. Over, it sealed itself apparently. Yeah, we talked about those before, I suppose. Yeah. Checking back in the north of the whole KV one. Well, surprisingly enough, a lot of the Hungarian tanks are still alive. Yeah, he has managed to keep him rarely like, count, which is in the hill <laughs> where it's nice and short range where they can actually do work. But yeah, it's, it's a good job that he's not moving them downtown for a bit. It's like KV-1 would probably eat them up. Well, and, and besides that too, we actually have some OT-34s. So we're oh, going to yeah. see the Husarok's kind of moving on in. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I'm more looking forward to see what kind of love comes on through from those Lovets. Or Lovets. <laughs> Lovets. Oh yeah, that's an, I don't really see your squad draw too often. It's more of a regular Hungarian infantry squad of both actions. But the Panzerfaust is... Can't go wrong with a Panzerfaust, now can you, Can't. No, you can't. Oh. Um, those are so good, even the Soviets want to taste of them. I know. Uh, you know what, actually, I'm taking a look at the, the rifles over here. Those rifles are roughly about the same thing as a K-98, aren't they, right? Yeah, I don't know, I think... I think, I have no idea what that, like, rifle actually is, wherever it is actually just a K-98. If someone wants to inform us what this FEG 43M is, it might it's, just be... It's some... not, it's, it's not a K-98. It's not? Okay. No. I, I was having a feeling that yeah, was probably the case. I'm guessing it's some sort of Hungarian Not made off. rifle. No, well, yeah, like some... And I mean that with the made. utmost respect. I mean, honestly, hand to God, these divisions in here are pretty darn solid. Uh, one biplane does go down. Uh, There's a, a, an LA-5 oh, yeah. right behind it. Not too surprising there. Mm -hmm. And more Airsoft Troopin. I mean, I, I am impressed by the commitment to the Airsoft Troopin spam. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I am I think, a little bit offended by it, but... I think for 14th, you get two cards of Earth's Heads. Don't quote me on that. But I have, a, I have a feeling you get two cards rough, so... You can do Earth's Heads Troop and Spam for quite a while. Now, I am surprised you haven't seen an Ognamachiki kind of spam coming out over here, but it is the Stromoviki from Big Rob. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing a big push by Mortenko de Niki with some half tracks coming into the southern town. Yeah. Nothing too too crazy. Yeah, Big Rob got the IS-1 on a lovely position overlooking the hilltop. And honestly, moving into this town is probably the best bet, is that Hungarian Cavalry Division 
it's not going to have a good time in that open field. I mean, that one IS-1 can easily... It might as well be an IS-2 for those Hungarian tanks. True. Actually, I was looking a little bit further south than that. The southern town, oh, you have that Pack yeah. 40 who's just engaging all of those light vehicles coming out of there. <laughs> Again, yeah. guys, that is an absolutely brilliant spot to sight any anti-tank. Mm -hmm. The field of fire is just absolutely superb. Yeah, it, it was, those hills are really the, the, the real key to the map, especially when it comes to the middle area. Oh, uh, we are going to get a gun run coming in on that. Oh no, it's going for Shug again. There has not been a ton. There's been a lot of investment in these biplanes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they're uh, pretty card efficient. If I guess a little rather little weird airplane, because you see, it doesn't really do all that much damage. It only has like two, it's like two, 50 it's... cal machine gun type things. Does it, are they even 50 cal? I, I think maybe it's the, like the 13. 30s, the, like the Spandaus. <laughs> You gotta paint it red, Jim. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Make the bullets yellow so they actually explode. Mm -hmm. um, we are gonna get some 82 mil mortar fire from the Soviets on the northern side. I think that's what we were talking about before, that KV-1. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's the KV-1 you were referring to. Okay. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is that despite the fact that the Germans are losing the southern front, the northern is just getting packed tight with tons and tons of Hungarians. Yeah, he's really solidifying his position in the forest. He doesn't have the flag here, unfortunately. At one OT-34, is currently preventing him from moving up any further. Now, I, I will say, down to the south, too, and this actually, I, we always make comments mm -hmm. about this. We are getting Hungaricus is moving in some Hungarians to bolster oh. up the Axis lines. I always love that. We've talked about that before. Yeah, it's always good to see people play team games as, as a coordinated team. And it's a really good idea, because... With how Bordang, first off, he took the Vanguard income, so now to be in C phase, he's going to be pretty weak in terms of probably units income, all of that stuff. But also, 184th is a really weird division. They're one of the few C uh, tier divisions in the game. And honestly, they have pretty good stuff. They've got good infantry, good artillery, good artillery, they got ISU 122s, but they have no bloody tanks. They have a card of Stuart Khan, a card of M3 Lees. And then a card of Valentine Mark 9s. And that's all you get. Not exactly the best when it comes to Soviet armored power. But it's going to really require him now into his later game to use his few ISU 122s to stem the German and Hungarian horde as they try to do that counterattack. Well, isn't it the same thing too that the, the 184th is a little bit unable to... How do I put this delicately? Doesn't their infantry tend to run out rather quickly too? Yeah. Yeah, it's also true, Khan. They don't have the vast amount of infantry to compare to other infantry divisions. It's decent, but uh, especially considering how Balding has set up his division, most likely, he probably does not have a lot of B and C face cards. Ooh, we are going to see one of the LAFs go on down. Yeah. Almost hit the Stuart. He almost did oh. more damage than the rest of that rocket run. Yeah. Just ex beautiful explosion, once again. Great, great looking game. Great looking it game. Is. Uh, and actually, 280 mil is going to go and explode on the hillside, and Wilksy says, oh, you want a piece of that? And it brings back some 210s. Mm -hmm. So while it may not be the size that counts, and very much more how you use it, yeah. um, Soviet's definitely getting some good play off their off-map. I guess I am surprised, though. I had expected the position to be somewhat reversed, that the Germans were getting tons of points now, as opposed to where we were previously. That is to say, the Soviets taking the lead in this middle of the B phase here. Yeah, it's not going too well. It's still pretty even Stevens when it comes to actual income. Well, not income, but, you know, victory points between both sides. The Soviets are losing by a lot of it, but still nothing too, too crazy. Honestly, the ball is still in the German hands, and I have a good feeling they're going to make some good plays of it. Well, they are evening back up the flag count as we speak. Um, though Baldang looks like he's trying... Oh, no, he just dropped a ton of the Machiki into that southern town. This is the moment I wish I actually had some carpet bombing from the 14th. Yeah. What's some tigers, actually? He hasn't brought out... Oh, there we go. He's finally got a tiger being brought out. Right, right as I say that. Uh, but, yeah, looking from the southern side for the Germans, they have so much when it comes to... You know, armored firepower, and then that field and town area that's going to really come in quite handy. Mm -hmm. That is certainly true. Unfortunately, we are going to see Hungaricus is going to drop some of his AT guns, more mm -hmm. or less because of that off-map call-in. 
even more interesting, we're seeing, finally seeing a little bit of regression coming north um, from that KV-1, all the infantry right there. Yeah. I don't know if it's incidental. Oh, yeah, he's trying, he's trying to cut him off. That's not going to work very well for him. Nope. I was trying to understand. Oh, wow. Is the artillery going? Okay. And we have some kind of battery fire going up the SU-76s, courtesy of... Is that the 120 mils? Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that was the 120 mils. The lovely thing about being an SPG is that you can SP your G array to another exactly. location. Exactly. I always wonder, I've been writing to say that for a while, I'm not going to lie. Okay, hey. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I was in my back pocket of jokes, ready to be said in the cast, and I'm glad that man's been used. Exactly, you know what, and, yeah. and Rang, I'm, I'm happy to be here to share that with you. Thank you, thank you. I, ho I hope the viewers at home appreciated that. Hey, the Nimrod is to engage this IL-2. Oh. And he survives. Oh. He's even engaging. Watch, will he kill his tormentor? Aiming like that? Never mind. No, he no. won't. <laughs> he's a little bit shaken. Oh, yes, he's very shaken. Mm -hmm. uh, so the IS-122 that you were talking about, it seems like he's taking fire from a couple of sources here. The Stuke, though, wow, he's got the Tiger and the two Stukes both engaging him. Yeah. And now we're off map artillery right on top of him, so that's not exactly ideal. And also, he is a very powerful tank at ISU 122, but the Tiger can pen him. Even the Stugs as well, it doesn't have the best. It has decent armor, but not, not enough to save it its skin. really worthwhile. Yeah, but like, it did plan to get a good hit on the Tiger at least. Uh, to the north, in the meantime, I don't mean to go back and forth too yeah. much, but the Hungarians are getting thrust back. That I was turns out I was wrong. That KV one is just absolutely destroying matters. <laughs> yeah, twenty twenty six uh, Stroloki is definitely a good counter. I say hard counter to the Hungarians. Those those heavy tanks are a pain in the butt because unlike most of uh, Russian divisions, which mean like T thirty fours and whatnot, you can mm -hmm. flank him and kill them rather efficiently. But the KV ones, they, they don't care about being flanked. They like being flanked. They, they got pretty good side armor. Yes, they do. And yeah. unfortunately, we do not have... Oh, wait, the Louvs is moving on in. Oh, no, he's falling back. Oh, but no. the other one's right here. Charge, my friend. Come on. Just just run Play out of the beautiful. building. Exactly. Uh, this is going to happen sooner or later. Any, any day now, mate. You it's really annoying up. how a uh, two-man recon squad has goddamn Panzer Faust icon or Bazooka icon. The like, cowboy oh can blow up the tank. But I nope. was just thinking that, yeah. Nope, nope, nope. They'll, they'll probably fix that soon. I hope. I hope so too. I was not excited per se, but yeah. quite curious. Pilot unconscious, uh, and yet somehow he's still able to fly. That's a very, very talented plane. Uh, it's got, it's got a very good autopilot. Well, the best that blow up model. That. It is fourteen ten in the meantime, <laughs> though. Biplanes are still rather frisky. And for some reason, these Turan Turans are trying to come south of the border. Here comes Lovis to move going on, and finally he's going for the, the attack. Aligning. The stars are aligning. Shooter killed. This is going to be a dead KV-1. you got to retreat right now, my friend. Okay. Ooh, nope. And that's right. going to halt the uh, Soviet push a little bit up north and give Hungarian... Hungaricus... Some time, and um, well, he's 120 mils. He's he's trying to hit some sort of artillery park, but it's no longer yeah. True. Uh, he needs to really concern himself more than northern town. Or look at the absolute that that southern thrust. There we have again. Eight, nine squads of Russian infantry. Ten. Wait, no. Wow. Twelve squads of Russian. Fifteen. Thirteen squads of Russian infantry. Down to that southern finger, probing into the German lines. That is a lot of dudes. Once once again, Balding must release... With how he's using his infantry, he must be starting to run low a bit. Like, jeez, that's, that's nuts. That's really nuts. There's, there's two Tigers right there, too, so it's not going to yeah. go very far. And, yep, we're seeing the Pioneers. Actually seeing a Hungaricus, uh, you know, Kampfgruppe moving on in from the southern side of that. Mm -hmm. And this is the end of that entire push. This is going to be a 12-12 in a second again. Yep. But the Russians just managed to capture some flags and bleed the Germans just a little bit, which is honestly pretty good. And once we get into sea phase, the Germans are going to be the ones which are going to be deficient in the income game. So it will probably be a good time for the Russians to try to get that counter-attack rolling again. Well, that's kind of surprising to me, is that 
Ooh, okay, for finding that TOT to the north. Surprising to me is that the... the We've just seen fighting on the extreme edges. Oh, no, actually, yep. you know now that I'm thinking about it, we actually have seen a fair amount of struggle in the middle. Which I, I guess we haven't seen the same kind of maneuver warfare we've been kind of almost hoping for. Yeah, like, once again, everyone is more uh, timid about moving on the middle as there's a lot less cover, and you're usually pretty scared of AT guns on the big two hills. Oh, cluster bombers coming in up north. What are they going to try and hit? Is he going to try and hit the Yeah, they're, they're 40 mils. Makes sense. Yeah. Or oh, the 40 M's, rather. Okay. Oh, he, wow, he there's used... two of them. <laughs> he I used... Did, I did see the second one. What's the second one on? Uh, he tried to hit the Yag... He tried to hit the Yag Panzer, didn't kill it, and then he used armor penetration clusters to try to kill AT guns. Which oh. doesn't work. Yeah, I, I've tried yeah. doing that. It's like using HE stuff in War Thunder. It's completely worthless. <laughs> yeah. Yep, and we got a uh, rocket plane being brought in down south. I think it's gonna go for Lukes. Really get Luxy. Oh, he's gonna get Luxy. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. No. Oh, wow, that's pretty pretty pathetic here, I O two. Like geez. Is that Three again, out of ten. Look at the flak viewings all in the area, stuff like that. I mean the ground fire there is pretty intense. Oh yeah. That's some um, pretty pretty solid German AA. And all the way down south here we've got this one IS ISU one two two holding off here's a little push here. And a lot of those Russian infantry seem to have been surrendered. But all oh, the Streliki with the AT rifles are getting some hits on the Tehran, so it may be just enough to stop the Hungarians. But two Tigers are being brought in, and those are a little bit more uh, tough to crack. Indeed. What was the comment I was going to make? I cannot recall at the moment. Oh, I guess I'm a little surprised that that Jagdpanzer up to the north actually is still alive. That was one that yep. got bailed out quite a bit of time ago, and it had the IS-1 Komorti, as well as another, I think it was an OT, perhaps, mm -hmm. right there waiting for him, surprised that nothing happened. Same. Same. Lucky, lucky Hatcher. The Hatcher will continue on hatching. I'm also admiring how absolutely gutsy Baldang's call-ins are. He's calling him Ultima Cheeky again. He's calling them all in behind enemy lines. It's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. They're not going to get anywhere close to that. He's a he's a very half uh, glass full type of guy. Uh, I, glass I, half full. I enjoy that almost as much as I enjoy his platoon of maxims that are holding down that town. Look at that. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. Uh, it's crazy crazy amount of machine gun fire. And it's, it's working on see, It's working real for real. Very true, and at long last, we are going to get a cluster bomb Ju-87. So that's good. He's going to have to come roti. He should be able to manage it. Oh, he's going to Did he knock him off the time? No, he did. Okay. And but oh, yeah. Doesn't kill it. Oh. Cluster bombs have been a bit uh, lackluster this match. They're usually the be all end all. I can almost, uh, you know, forgive that though to a certain extent. I mean, those are the two and a half kilogram AP rounds. Yeah. So you think about it, what, five, six pounds? We're not that impressive. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a safe charger show, so it only needs like one or two to... I actually have no idea how it bloody works, but... I'm just going to leave it at yeah, I have no bloody idea how it really works. I think it's just like a bunch of small RPG type shaped warheads. Yeah, get dropped from above. Well, I was hoping they get dropped from above. I mean, most yeah. submarines don't really fire off too many uh, bombs these days, I hope. Yeah, and plant and mines take a little bit of time, you know. Very true, very true. Uh, now we are going to see, there's not the Machiki squads that did not go all the way behind enemy lines that were deployed there, technically. Mm -hmm. We're going to do the long walk through the forest. Yeah. Um, I can say it's only air such trooping. Some of them only with a couple hundred rounds of MP40 <laughs> ammo. Oh my gosh, actually a lot of them only have MP40 ammo. Oh, that's true, air such trooping. Trooping, right, yeah. Low on ammo, being charged by a bunch of angry rations with SMGs. This is... Not gonna go well. Not gonna go well. The Tigers aren't. They do actually have some decent line of sight on around the Ultima Chigis moving up, so they can provide a lot, bit, a little bit of fire support. I say at least it's historic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Earth's in the front. Where are, they, where are they engaging? Oh, they're engaging the town. Mm-hmm. Trying to hit the Maxims. Oh, rocket plane on the Tigers. And is it gonna... Yeah, no, it's gonna be no, too far away. No. Yeah. Yeah, not I not too rocket. I Pretty think rubbish. it needs the, the Rangru approved airstrike process. Oh, yeah. Uh, turning off the rocket, train for it to get close, and then turn it on. Mm hmm. 
Yeah, I'd definitely be a good micro tip for IL2. Also known as the Luke Skywalker approach. <laughs> Don't use your targeting computer. Use the force. Mm -hmm. Namely gravity. Um, in the middle, we are going to see these Seeker Dongs have finally gotten themselves across that open field with all of those Maxims now killed. Yeah, finally. And the ultimate cheek here charging and trying to get line of sight on those tigers and not going to get it. Yeah, uh, like a little bit. Need to get a little bit too close with those AT grenades to effectively get a kill. Oh wow, these pioneers are actually engaging them as well. So they're using their own the Russian ammo against them. That's that's <laughs> shocking. Oh, I I love it how there's like fully Russian equipped German scrods, and there's quite a few of them you can get too. Mhm. Mm that's just so. Bizarre. I mean, it makes sense, of course, because Captain Law of Russian recruitment during the campaign. Mm -hmm. But especially in like a like a video game, like you think Company of Heroes, there's not many instances where you get like a like a German grenadier squad of SVTs and whatnot. But hey, you know, waste not, yeah. want not. Uh, I know, right? Something's bouncing. What's this bouncing from? Is it IS-122 back there? Uh, is it IS no, Val the Valentine Comrades. Valentine's Com <laughs> Valentine Comrades. They're not going to be all out effective against a Tiger tank. Just like in North Africa. There weren't that many tigers in Africa. No, but they made them count. They certainly did. Mm -hmm. uh, that was back to the Castle Ring stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it's Post like... Post Rommel? Late 40... Probably late, late 43, I guess, is when tigers first arrived. I'm I'm not entirely entirely certain in that regard, but... Right about the time that Patton read his book. Mm-hmm. Got it. <laughs> Oh, Rang, there yeah. are times I wonder if we're too nerdy for this game. Uh, if, for people who don't get that reference, that was from the movie Patton in <laughs> 1970, <laughs> where Patton outsmarts Rommel's panzer divisions with his own tank divisions. And he croaked in the movie, saying, Rommel, <laughs> I read your book, end crew. Uh, though, interestingly enough, Rommel was not present for that campaign. He was back in Germany, um, resting. Mm-hmm. And then uh, did he not ever return to Africa because Africa kind of went tits up? Yes. He, yeah. Yes, that's correct. He took yeah. over Normandy instead. Mm hmm. And yeah, thank going... God he only got to Normandy when he did, otherwise things <laughs> would have been a lot worse on TJ. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what the whole uh, SD44 campaign, German campaign's about. <laughs> the alternate history. Mm hmm. But anyway, up north, the Hungarians are getting pushed into a little pocket here. They've been flanked around from the north. By the Sermafikis, no T-34s. And it's a sort of like lovely maneuvering that I've seen. Seeing big uh, big Rob move along this northern side here. And he's on Garen to pretty much bug it on that hill. Yeah, <laughs> they're pretty I disagree. Funny. I disagree. We have this, this 120 mils dropping shots down on oh, top yeah. of the OT-34. Good so point. if the Hussars can get on in there, I'm not going to say get an AT grenade off, but maybe at least being moderately competitive, that should be okay. There we go, falling back. Here we go, oh, quick rush. Okay, maybe not quite yet, but the Germans under here are actually losing a two ticket per tick. Oh damn! Where's that? That's because the, this the northern one, uh, the northern two flags right here, mm -hmm. and yep, that uh, town is completely under their control, which is yeah. weird because the Germans have been there the entire bloody time. Mhm. Mm yeah, you're right about northern side. That's a good call. This man's got reinforcements just in the nick of time, and a bunch of Hungarian tanks as well. And that's going to be the end of that push, I think, for the most mm -hmm. part. We have a guard DP squad moving on in, and my camera just freaked out. Um, <laughs> I guess they did not get off that Faust. Okay. The Russians have... Yeah, the Russians have, like, one or two big guns. Got one of those two or three millimeter artillery. Oh, big yeah. Rob got the ISU. In the uh, middle here, just providing fire support. I've seen that big beast. Worth noting another round of infantry coming in from Baldang, and uh, for the most part, <laughs> it's getting chewed the F up by half tracks and grenadier yep. squads and Piglet grenadier squads. Yeah, I think Baldang's A phase approach is really starting to bite him in the ass now, as he's he's probably running low on stuff, which would not surprise me as 184. And it was and nice he's... 1 yeah, you can't really be affording to lose them. You don't get yeah many in that division, so it isn't good. I mean, that entire southern flank has essentially gone over to uh, Rootski. Well, and, and I'm wondering if we're going to see a push to pick up these two town flags very oh, soon. Yeah. It's got to happen very quickly, though. 
Yeah, I'd definitely really bring the thing back in favor for the German side, for the Axis side, to be a bit more accurate, I guess. You, you know, I continue to do that, and I'm sorry to all of our uh, Hungarian comrades in arms out there. It's like uh, when he had the uh, Normandy division, he's going to say Allied divisions, not just Russian. What do you think about the Canadians and the Brits and the Americans? I thought it was called the Canadians or the Canadians down there. I could call it the UKF. Does that work for you? <laughs> Commonwealth. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Col uh, colonists. <laughs> Actually, random trivia question. When when did Canada get its independence? 1867. Like... Really? 1867 is when they got official independence. I believe it was like four provinces or whatnot. And then... So that's that's when Quebec started griping, and then... Yeah, yeah, there's like the Fenian Rage, a bit which happened, which were kind of interesting, and some other stuff. But yeah, it's 1867. Okay, I actually never knew that, so I appreciate that. For some reason, I always thought it was like the 50s, I don't know why. In 1960-something is when the flag actually turned into like the red and right maple leaf. Flag. Maybe that's it. Because beforehand it was like the British, you know, the, the the standard British colony flag of we put the we put the Union Jack in the top left, and then write some other shit to the rest of the flag. There you are, folks. That's how the Canadian flag was made. Random mm -hmm. shit. <laughs> the old one. Thankfully, they fixed it for something a bit much nicer. It's a big leaf. That's adorable. It's very mm -hmm. very, very floral. Uh, Germans do take the town. They actually have a pioneer SVT squad moving on in to get these off the Machiki. And the Pioneers, yep, they have two PPSs to the Ultima Cheekies 10, so I wonder who yeah. will win that one. But they do have some Panzer II Luxes to uh, even the deal. And 20 millimeters. oh, the 20 mils are out of ammo, never mind. They have the machine guns at least, but that's about it. Wait, for whom? For the uh, Panzer II Lukes outside the town, on the north Oh, outside. I see, okay. Of course they're out of ammo. But it is 12-12, uh, and the Germans are are threatening to take back this northern town as well. Northern town just to the south of that. They can take out mm -hmm. those three infantry units. That's a pretty big swing. Yeah. Yeah, we love how it's met so far. It's been very maneuvering. Both sides have been given and taken. And even though the Germans are pretty low in terms of the economy, they're still giving it their all. Well, we actually are going to have Baldang continuing his... I, I grab a rock and throw it <laughs> approach five at guns are coming in down south um very very gutsy play here yeah. i think he buys all his units from bulk barn and you know what hey it's the costco approach i understand yeah sense. i mean i didn't need to go into costco and buy you know eight boxes of cereal but i got cereal for like a few months now exactly if the end of the world happens you're ready to go mm -hmm. at least for a few months for a few months, and then I mean, the worst thing is if I have that cereal and the end of the road happens, I'm definitely not gonna have that enough milk. Yeah, to make I that know. cereal actually worthwhile. Get like Parmalat or something. Yeah, I gotta get like condensed milk or some nonsense. Uh, but we do have the, again, so um, with the Machiki, some brave auto Machikis running on through, not gonna do very well as suddenly they get <laughs> absolutely roasty toasty. Oh, but nope. Tiger goes down, that's a big loss. Oh, of course, what all you have though are. M42s that have no HE ammo, that, that kind of mitigates part of the joy. Yeah, yeah, really, bulging is very... I mean, now he's spam and recon units, just snipers, because it's probably all he has at this point. We've got a bunch of clusters being brought in up north. Yes, AP, going after that Tiger, and between the two of them, the, yeah, that's probably going to go down. Yeah, and I've even seen an, an anti-tank gunplay IL-2, which you don't really see all that often. You really want that Tiger dead, jeez. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you the surface of the moon. Mm hmm. Poor guy. Oh no, that CR 42. I, I can't believe it was biplane to still alive. And they're you were definitely, saying. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely not alive anymore. Like I said, very, very peculiar fight. I wouldn't, wouldn't really recommend taking him on. Oh my gosh, the Faust Patron's going after the Nimrod. There's a Faust Sneaky to the north. Up north? Oh, I see. Oh boy. Will that idiot get away? Yes, he, yes, he, yes, he, will. he will. Just because he's an idiot doesn't mean he doesn't mm -hmm. have a survival instinct. But yeah. yes, judging by how many airplanes are just coming out over here from the Soviets instead, I would say that Baldang is out of infantry. I would yep. say that Big Rob is pretty damn close to being out of infantry. Yeah, this is definitely coming down to the attritional warfare aspect of the game. And the Germans, I mean, man's on the cap at southern town and pretty much... Like shut down buildings, 
entire force down south. I think the Germans pretty handily got this. I think that's pretty pretty well, safe to say. Goddamn Axis. Ha! I feel better about I that know. now. Uh, but yes, the Germans have taken the southern town. Excuse me, the... Nope, it is Germans in this case. Yeah. The Germans have taken the southern town. To the north, it looks like, again, the, the Hungarians bleed and the Germans take the glory. Mm-hmm. Um, jerks. Ooh, and ju 88s moving on in to try to just pound that road with AP clusters again, so not sure what's going on there. But I appreciate their pluck. Yeah, he really just... Just for trying to retard yeah, the progress, I guess? I don't I, know. I guess, you know, I just want to tickle the enemy front line a bit. Wow! AT oh, what the take fuck? Two AT, grenade, uh, AT guns? What the fuck? I thought AP didn't do anything to, to, to self... Okay, cool. Hey, you know, maybe the bombs fell exactly on their heads and just, like, concussed the anti-tank crews. That's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm thinking it was a very direct hit, so it's probably pretty easy to get a direct hit when you drop, like, 80 bombs. Well, we are going to have a Focke Wolf 189 coming on in. This mm -hmm. is kind of a perverse plane. Yeah, apparently it was used extensively on the Eastern Front as, like, the recon plane. The Russians had some, some like, scary name for it. Because really? when they'd see it flying, like, partisan squadron, when they see it, like, flying above, they knew, like, the Germans were looking for him. Like, big, like, you know, like, big brother. You're kidding, really? Yeah, those things are used apparently quite a lot on the Eastern Front. Like, like, in, in a large quantity of numbers. Don't, don't quote me on this. I'm, I'm not 100% accurate, but I've read it online, so it must be true. <laughs> well, for some reason, we are seeing a KV-85 moving on in the north, and my first thought is, what the hell took it so long to get here? <laughs> probably probably didn't need it, because he's just fighting all those uh, Hungarian dudes. The KV runs are probably good enough. But yeah, KV-85 is always, always a good pick. The KV and a T-3485 slapped together. Maybe that's what it was. The guy only got finished got out of getting out of tank school a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. Now, it is worthwhile to mention that uh, the Germans before, down in the south, were pushed back rather heftily. I want to say, what do you think, easily about two... No. Actually, probably about three or four kilometers off the front line. Yeah. And now it's been completely returned. They're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. He's just... I mean, they've almost got uh, Borden's, like, home flag, like, near, near home flag in the forest down south. Yes. Yes, with Sikerung's moving on in, even against a couple of Maxims in back with the Ogdemachiki. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call they're going to get that. Yeah, yeah, Borden, I mean, now he's bringing in artillery. He's he's pretty much out of stuff at this point. And there's the J88 bomber, and the bombs are going to drop bombs and go boom, boom. And as P2 looks, P2 looks has been rearmed, mm -hmm. and he is calm and cools the other side of the pillow. What's he yep. aiming at, though? He's not seeing those mortars, unfortunately, just yet. The mortars will be pressuring. Okay, absolutely weird position of the line. Yep. Now Baldwin is getting all of his infantry support guns on the field, and all his app and well, big robots he sends in the airplane to help out. That's going to be a very dead pound of two Lukes. Oh no, it's only dropped one clusters on it, and the second cluster on the Tiger. No, nah, they're both pretty much dead. Yeah. And the ME-109 takes out one of those cluster planes. That's always very good there. And the IL-2, well, shockingly enough, is not a terrible furball plane. It's a little bit less maneuverable. Mm-hmm. The IL-2s are pretty nice. It's usually the fact they have pretty damn good armor. So when it comes to a furball, they can, you know, they can get third on just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Well, we have the two Tigers there. Um, mm-hmm. And the Fleck Vierling still is able to engage. I would say it's IL-2 coming on in. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to get a very accurate barrage off, and he will not. No oh, barriers. wow, holy Whoa. hell. Lucky bugger. AP rounds that take out soft targets. The rockets fired from a billion miles away that somehow hit something. Yeah, that was, that was, pretty, that was pretty lucky. <laughs> One of them must have got a, a direct hit. That tiger was pretty already damaged beforehand. Who knows? Well, Yak-9s are starting to go down, courtesy mm -hmm. of that flak blanket. Yeah, and Baldung's now using his, uh, oh, I don't know, recon plane here to get into the fight. Which, honestly, those IO2 recon planes are fantastic. Yeah, they are. They really, yeah. really are. I mean, it doesn't have the bombs, but it still has fantastic armament. Not the best agility and whatnot, but as you can see, he can take quite a bit of fire. I mean, that's a whole flak for barrage, and he's still flying. 
So not, probably not for long. Sarcasm aside, mm -hmm. should the Russians have tapped out by now? Probably, yeah. I mean, boarding. I mean, Big Rob is honestly doing pretty good. Just due to his uh, income choice and divisional choice, but boarding has definitely dropped the ball on his end. And yeah, yeah. I mean, he he did do a pretty good early A phase rush and managed to get a good amount of ground, but. I mean, to be fair, he's also playing a C-tier division, which are pretty terrible for the most part. Yeah, but, yeah. but you know what? Don't give me excuses. I want results. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we do have this Beglitz Pentagon Adir, who is down to 170 rounds of MP44 ammo. Then he will be completely out, which is just a very, very bizarre thing to see. Yeah. Very yeah, uncommon. I, I guess, you know, if it was... Uh... If you get an assault rifle in 1944, like, I'd be a bit trigger happy with it. I guess, which I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. It just, it, again, doesn't seem to happen very often. I know, I know. It's staying alive that long. Uh, meanwhile, to the north, the Soviets are taking back that absolute northernmost couple of flags, which is not supremely worrying per se, considering that the Soviets to the south are pretty much, you know, spawn yeah. camped. <laughs> There's, there's, there's no Soviets to the south anymore. <laughs> he's getting mortars now. He's got he's he's bringing out his more fast mortar batteries. He's got some flamethrower troops. But yeah, not uh not ideal. And I'm actually really surprised how little Rudsky has really moved all his troops. He only really moved probably half of his force up. The other half is still behind his line. The tigers and other infantry. Definitely a defense in depth strategy. Well, we do get a couple of KV-85s moving on in, too, so if this is going to be one of those moments where it's like, oh my gosh, guys, we're going to turn this around as we speak, that's going to be impressive. And I mm -hmm. don't know if that's going to happen, but um, it is worth noticing. Yeah. Especially since uh, we have Sikurungs over here with that GRB-39s. Mm-hmm. But the mortars is enough to stress out the forest a little bit and big Rob bringing in some guards, troops, and also the KV-85s, as you mentioned, but... It's going to be quite a bit of forest that you're going to have to pluck through, and the Soviets don't really have time on their side. JU-87 goes down to the north of Carper Bombing, uh, plane no longer with us. And we have a bunch of HE bombers looking to hit the back lines. That's actually going to be rather terrifying. Huh. There's a Luftroth being brought out now. What? Oh, those are the big ones. of medium-sized bombs. With the 500 kilograms. So oh, we, we got a cluster to the north as well too. So a cluster going on that northern hill, going after that Zis gun. Three, two, one. Oh, ball dang has just dumped. Come on, we've got to see his bombing run at least before the match ends. I think we will just barely. Please, please, big, don't, don't, don't drop. That's a KV-85. Yeah. That's big, and actually the northern one as well takes out its fair share. Get your 88 coming in. Yeah, with everything so clustered around at spawn point, that's It's got to be at least two kills. Yeah. Big boom. That's... Yep, there we go. <laughs> there you go, two kills. You got, a, you got a dead on the money. And Big Rob calls it quits, and that makes perfect sense at this point. But regardless, mm -hmm. a 42-minute, 30-second slugfest. Yeah. Look at those deaths over there. Baldang dropping 5,500 points. Wilksy having almost 6,000 points in kills. Yeah, Baldang essentially lost every single unit in his division, it seems like. <laughs> generally, <laughs> oh, generally, I have no division. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just know right. real quick, Hungaricus probably has the best um, avatar I've seen in a bit. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a really... I, I, I like the theme he's going for. I, I, I gotta respect the entire Hungarian theme. I wonder if he's only gonna play Hungarian divisions. That would that would earn my props for me. Yeah, I mean, it's only you only got two choices with that, so you got to get good of those two divisions, and one of them's terrible, and the other one's yeah, all right. Well, but nonetheless, one aisle two over here from I think actually this is from yeah, this is from Baldang's position. So yeah. he had one aisle two that got three kills, and other than that, not really a whole lot at home to write about. Off map got some kills. That's about it too. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Comp house? That is certainly the battle house. Look at that. <laughs> oh yeah, he knocked out pretty much all the stewards in the forest. That was a turkey suit for him. It's the same as stewards couldn't do much else. That was a real like nucleus. 
and the boardings uh, uh, push P2. up start. P2 as well. Was it? Three, Whoa. six, nine. Nine squads, an artillery piece, and a machine gun. He pretty much killed a company's worth of men by himself. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of Aftermath Cheekies, which will no longer be Aftermath much Cheekies anymore. Yeah, well, you know, they like they love chasing the cheeks. Um, heck, even we even have a half track that got themselves a good amount of kills. <laughs> wow. Wow. I think that's, I think that's a half track. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, sorry, Whoa. sorry. Poopfer. What the fuck, Poopfer? Like, jeez. This is, this, is this is the book Leap Pen uh, Pentagon yeah. idea who, went out, who ran out of ammunition. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. He deserves a medal. He deserves every medal in the German the German armory. I think he's getting a few nice crosses, that's for sure. Maybe some close combat clasps as well. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of kills. Jeez. Jeez. That was yeah, as you see, Bulldog really dropped a ball in the later stages of the match. But alright. Uh, but that's the, but you know, games like this are why we come back to this. Yeah. The Germans were on the ropes for a bit. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, the Germans and the Hungarians were on the ropes for a bit. The Russians, well, the Russians had to say Dosvidania for today, but that's all right. Yeah, the Russian Russ didn't work. But you know what, Rank? Even though they have to say Dosvidania and we have to say Dosvidania now, that's not at the end of it, of course, right? We have we got more stuff coming up next week. Of course. Of course. So, folks, if you see anything you do like, of course, leave comments and likes below. It helps us determine what we want to put on the channels themselves. Mm -hmm. But until next week, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.